Okay, now for question number seven from Mechanics 1, M1, January 2009. Um, this question is about connected particles. And here we have one end of a light inextensible string is attached to a block P of mass 5 kilograms. The block P is held at rest on a smooth fixed plane. Okay, so there's no tension, there's no friction, sorry, involved here, um, which is inclined to the horizontal angle of alpha, where sine alpha, do we know sine alpha is equal to three fifths. Okay. The string lies along a line of greater slope of the plane and passes over a smooth light pulley, which is fixed at the top of the plane. The other end of the string is attached to a light scale pan. Okay, a light scale pan, that means the scale pan itself has no um, mass. Can you know its mass? Uh, which carries two blocks Q and R, with block Q on top of R. As shown in figure 3, the mass of block Q is 5 kilograms and the mass of block R is 10 kilograms. The scale pan hangs at rest and the system is released from rest by modeling the blocks as particles, ignoring air resistance and assuming the motion is uninterrupted. Find the following things. Okay, so we've got to first deal with the acceleration of the scale pan and the tension of the string. So let's just try, put some forces down here that we know. Okay, so first of all, we got the weight of the particle. Put this with a arrow. That's the weight of the particle acting straight down. So that's 5G newtons acting straight down here. Now, Q and R, the total mass is 5 plus 10, 15. So I'm going to put, and the mass of the scale pan is negligible because it says it's a light scale pan. So I'm going to put this as 15G the weight, total weight acting down in this part. Okay, we have the, t the, we also have here a reaction force acting upwards. Whenever the two contact, or there's contact, it's always perpendicular to the, to the surface. So that's the reaction force at P. And we've got the tension in the string this way and this way. And then I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just write down the components of this force parallel and perpendicular to the plane. Okay, so this angle here is alpha. Okay, so this is 5G times cosine alpha because you've got to go into the angle. And here we have 5G times sine alpha because you're going away from the angle. Now we don't have um, any friction. Okay, so you've got your tensions here. And when it's released, it says Okay, so it says the particle hangs at rest, the system is released from... <laughs> okay, so now when it's released from rest, okay, we've got to work out the acceleration. So I'm guessing, because this is uh, much heavier um, over here, so this is going to accelerate in this direction here. Okay, we'll accelerate in this direction here. This will come down. Okay, so therefore, what we can do is, it says find the acceleration of the scale pan. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a pair of equations from here. Now, I'm going to consider the scale pan first. So one, I'm going to consider the scale pan. All right, let's look at the forces acting on the scale pan. We know that the resultant force is equal to ma. Okay, so it's, it's accelerating down. So 15G minus T equals 15MA because the mass is 15 kilograms altogether. Okay, 15 kilograms altogether. So we got here, as we said, uh, 15G minus T equals 15 times the acceleration. That's from F, the resultant force equals MA. All right, that's taking, resolve, resolving the forces so that down is positive because this is moving down. Then I'm going to take look at the, the five kilogram mass. 
block P. I'll consider, I'll call it P. Consider P. Okay. I'm going to take up the plane as positive because it's moving in that direction. So I'll have T minus 5G sine alpha. T minus 5G sine alpha is equal to MA, which is going to be five times acceleration. Okay, because it's uh, the mass is five here. Okay, so now I know that sine alpha is three over five. Okay, so I can find what T is here. Okay, I can find what A is here by, sub by adding these two together. So let me just simplify this. Sine alpha is equal to three fifths. So I can say this is T minus um, 5G times 3 fifths equals 5A. The 5 cancels. So T minus 3G equals 5A. So let me call this equation 1. Let me call this equation 2. Okay, if I do equation 1 plus equation 2, the T's will be eliminated. Minus T plus T is 0. So I have 15G minus 3G, which is 12G. I'm adding them together, remember, so it's going to be 15 plus minus 3, and 15a, 15a plus 5a is 20a. So I'm left with a is equal to 12 over 20g, which I can simplify. So a is going to be, uh, what number goes into both of those? 2. Okay, 4 in fact. 12 divided by 4 is 3. And 20 divided by 4 is 5, so 3 fifths G. Now, how have they asked us to write our answer? Um, they didn't mention in terms of G or anything like that, or exact value. So you can leave your answer like this, okay, if you wish. You can also, if you wish, leave your answer as uh, 3 divided by 5 times 9.8. Nine you can leave your answer as... 5.88 or 5.9 okay if you wish okay you can round it to one decimal one one significant figure sorry two significant figures or three significant figures i personally like to leave it in terms of um in terms of g okay i like to prefer to do that unless otherwise stated okay so that's the answer to part a part uh, part a part one Okay, so this is part one, finding the acceleration. Now we've got to find the tension in the string, which is part two. I'll try and do that here. Now that's pretty simple. We know that T minus 3G equals 5A. We can use this equation if we want. So we can say T is equal to 5A plus 3G. So you're going to have 5 times 3 fifths G. 5 times 3 fifths G. Okay, plus... 3g so you're going to have the 5 and the 5 cancelling out so you're left with 6g newtons okay so that's the tension in the string and that's the acceleration okay so there we have the answer to this question we're going to do part b on the next video